All right, and continuing with lesson 4.2 on um, linear and nonlinear expressions in X. What we're going to do now is what your homework is going to be like. And we're going to take what we did in lesson 4.1 when we were translating words into mathematical expressions, and then we're going to take another step. And that's what this is right here. State whether or not the expression is linear or nonlinear. If it's nonlinear, explain why. Okay, so again, the more, more you practice, the easier it'll get. The sum of a number and four, the sum of a number and four times the number. So here's, let's do some hints here. First of all, we're talking about a number. So I'm going to say, let X be the number. And so then I'm going to say, instead of saying a number here, I'm going to cross it out and I'm going to replace it with x and four times the number. So now I have the sum of x and four times x. To me, that seems a little bit easier to understand. I know sum means to add. And the and sign tells me where I'm putting the plus sign. So I'm going to take a number and plus sign four times a number. Now, yes, I know we can simplify that. We can add like terms. That's not what we're doing right here. We're just writing each of the following statements. We don't even have 12 of them as mathematical expressions. The sum of a number and four times a number. Now I have to say if it's linear or nonlinear. So what you do is you look at the variables. Notice these are both to the first power. We're not adding them. We're not doing anything like that. Look at the variable terms. They're both to the first power. So we'd say it's linear. Okay. Linear means your variable to the first power. If you would graph it, it would be a line. All right, number two here. The quotient, remember quotient means to divide, of two and a number subtracted from 17. Well, I'm still talking about a number here, so I want to say let x be the number. So we identify our variable. And so I'm going to say the quotient of 2 and x subtracted from 17. Again, here's that and sign. That means we're going to divide this, which comes first, 2 and x, then subtracted from 17. I mean, we were taking it away from 17. So 17 comes out front. Now, right off the bat, I have to give you a little x, um, an exemption um, from the rule I set up here about the variables, because this is to the first power. But if we look at this right here, okay, this 2 over x, I can rewrite that as 2 over 1 times 1 over x. If you think about that, 2 times 1 is 2, 1 times x is x. And if we focus right here on this 1 over x to the first power, I can rewrite that as x to the negative 1. If you think back to our x point rule. So yes, if the variable is to the first power, it's linear, except if it's in the denominator. Because if it's in the denominator, then that means that we actually have a negative 1 exponent here. So this is the exception. This is actually nonlinear because The x is in the denominator. That works. Or basically the x is raised to something other than 1. That's usually what I say. Oh, sorry, I'm getting sloppy again. Always. Because the x is in the denominator. Okay, moving on. Let's try another example. Half of the product of a number multiplied by itself three times. Again, I know this can seem really confusing. So just keep pushing through. It's not going to be confusing forever. Let x be the number. Half of the product of x multiplied by itself three times. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about this multiply by itself three times. But half, and I think actually, I think actually you probably just have half 
of x in your notes. I really do try to update these. I just scanned the wrong one. Okay, so you have half of x. So half of x is just half of x multiplied by itself three times. And what we have here is the repeated multiplication. Well, repeated multiplication is powers. All right, so would this be linear or nonlinear? And in this case, we're going to say this is nonlinear. And this is the standard response I give. Because the, oh, let me, let me do better. Because the x term or variable term is raised to something other than one. If it's something other than one, then we say it's nonlinear. All right. Twice a number subtracted from four times a number added to 15. Guess what? Let x be the number. So twice x subtracted from four times x added to 15. So again, notice we have subtracted from here. So if I have twice x, so two times x, subtracted from, that means it comes out front here, four times x, twice the number, two times x, subtracted from four times x, added to 15. Again, I know we can simplify that, but it's not what it's asking for. Linear, nonlinear, well, this is to the first power, this is to the first power, we just say it's linear. Remember, our directions say we only have to explain in bold here if it's nonlinear. All right, couple more. The square of the sum of six in a number. Let x be the number. So we have the square of the sum of six and, remember that's where you put the plus sign where the and is. So if I take the sum and I add six plus a number, six plus x, and now I want to square that. I want to square the sum. So this is my sum, I square it. Linear, nonlinear, nonlinear. And guess what I'm going to say? Because the x term is raised to something other than 1. All right, and the last one. This is one I know we were practicing on our last homework assignment. The sum of four consecutive numbers. So let x be the first number. That's important because then I know my first number, I'm identifying my first number as x. And if it's consecutive, the next one after that, and we're adding sum, is x plus 1. So if this was 10, this would be 11. And then that's 1, 2. I need another one, so I'm going to say x plus 2. And I need 4, so that I'm going to go x plus 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers. And linear, nonlinear, well, they're all raised to the first power. Notice I'm not paying any attention to the constants, just the variable terms, and so this would be linear. All right, so you can kind of read through this. Um, and it says linear expression x can be re represented by terms whose variable x is raised to either power of 0 or power of 1. And we'll maybe talk more about that power of 0 later. Okay, a nonlinear expression has terms where x is raised to a power that is not 0 or 1. And that's why I was just saying other than 1. I guess I should say 0 or 1, but that's okay. Um, we'll talk more about that later.
Okay, and so what we're taking what we did yesterday, translating into mathematical expressions, and then adding something onto it, deciphering between linear or nonlinear.